back in the day this it was a, a really really hot hot area it was almost a guaranteed sellout every time and it was just they were so wrestling crazy here it was just always hot crowds and the, the, the fans just they ate it up Hazard and, and Eastern Kentucky in general was pretty much a battleground you were almost guaranteed that there was going to be a riot or somebody was going to pull a knife or, or something along those lines it was, it was a rough crowd for a lot of years it was a rough area to work some friends of mine their dad was putting on a, a fundraiser show and the promotion they brought in was using Jimmy Valiant and they talked to Jimmy Valiant and basically told him that I wanted to be a wrestler uh, I went and met him, talked to him, was impressed and he invited me to come to his camp in Virginia and gave me the price and everything and, and was I, I was eager of course then from there it uh, it, it went downhill between that moment and my first actual match and, um, so that's that was my introduction to the wrestling business first show we ever promoted as HCW was in London, Kentucky. And it, it was it was the most it was the most god awful show that I've ever seen in my life. Uh, I think it drew seventeen people and it was just horrible from start to finish. Maybe three or four months into things, we started started kind of figuring out what we were doing, and then the then the houses started coming up, and uh, but it was it was a struggle for those first few months. When I was in high school, before the pro wrestling started, me and six or seven of my real close friends started our own backyard wrestling promotion. It was real famous in most of the cities around here, everybody's backyard, backyard. Ours was the Furnace Mountain Wrestling Association. And uh, we started with a trampoline, but we didn't want our trampoline to be bouncy, so we stacked bed mattresses up under it to make it solid, more like a wrestling ring. And we would wrestle on that every weekend or every time through the week we got the chance. And we had an RV that was set up next to it. We'd use that to jump off of as our top rope, as our dressing room. Stayed in character, you know, just as close as we could. I mean, we never had any real serious injuries, a few cuts and scrapes and things like that. Uh, I came up with the name when I was still doing Backyard, J.R. Rock, which the J and the R are the letters of my first and middle name and, and rock just because I rock <laughs> so that's how I came up with the name J.R. Rock mm -hmm. 
me and another guy who uh, backyard wrestled went over and watched the show in Mount Sterling because one of their parents knew a guy who was a manager, Jim and Jim Chadwick, for this uh, promotion in Mount Sterling. So we went and watched them. And he told us to talk to him after the show, you know, so we did. And they gave us all the contact info and told us how much the training would cost and to come back. So me and him went and we trained that one day, you know, and I, as soon as I was there, I was like, I mean, I'm doing this for good, but you just have to have a love for the business. I mean, there's lots of guys around here that talk about it. Like there's a guy I work with and he wants to get into wrestling. He's like, yeah, I couldn't see myself doing anything with being a wrestler. And I think he's under the impression that if he gets in it, he's going to go straight to the WWE or straight to TNA. Which I told him, I was like, if you get in, it's going to be a long, hard road. I was like, you're going to be doing indie promotions. I was like, if you want to go to one of those, you're going to have to give up everything you got here. And you're going to have to travel to Connecticut or to Florida. I think most of them are realistic and don't have any intentions of becoming famous. And if they are wrestling there now, they, there's a possibility they may have been famous. But they're at the end of their careers now or they wouldn't be working for these companies now. basically down to the core fan. The fans basically that are going to go out of loyalty or just because it's wrestling. And, and that's, those fans are, you can pretty much count on them to be there and be a part of the show. A lot of fans now become fly by night fans. They're sports entertainment fans. And those, those are not always the best fans to work in front of. But when you've got the fans that, that love it, truly love it, like the old school, they're the best fans to work in front of. And there are still, there are still a lot of those out there that make the shows fun. What irritates what irritates you is when you're going when you're going out there trying your hardest, trying to give them a good show, and you're in the middle of a promo or something, and you're trying to get the story across, and all of a sudden this what chant breaks out, and sometimes that makes you just want to throw the microphone down and walk off and say, "Get it, it's not worth it." For the rest, for the true wrestling fans, it's it's still a lot of fun to to, to go out and, and perform in front of them. 
for a long time, Somerset and Pulaski County was like our second home. And when we would go down there, the fans would come in, they, they knew your name, they knew everything about you. It was like, even with the fans, it was like family. They would come in and would talk to you and would ask questions, would, would, uh, would ask to help set the ring up and, and, and help tear it down. And then they would still go out front and buy a ticket and go out and still get worked up and, and part of the show. And they're just, those people are a dying breed. There's fans, there's fans that come to shows and stuff that uh, you could probably say, well, who's Harley Race? Who's Jack Briscoe? Dory Funk Jr. They'd have no idea. No idea who those guys are. sad is that they they don't care some of them don't care about the history a lot of the fans today think the wrestling business just started five or six years ago and it's 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 been around since the 1800s uh well a lot of people say vince mcmahon saved the wrestling business maybe what is it i think he's the one who put it in the toilet uh he destroyed regional wrestling and i think that was the greatest thing ever I mean, so what, you weren't a national star, but everybody had their territories, everybody had their favorites, I mean, you could travel here and there, and it was a lot more closer knit, because there'd be three or four guys you'd travel the circuit with all the time, and be like brothers with them, you don't have that anymore now, I mean, there might be one or two guys, maybe one guy you'll go to shows with all the time and become close with, but it's not like it was, so I think it's horrible now. The, ge the general rule of school of belief is that wrestling ever so often has it, it's it's a cycle the wrestling business runs in cycles it may be up you may be can draw really well do really good business five six years and then it'll bottom out and usually it's looked at maybe every five six years the business will go through that down cycle and then it'll be will build itself back up. This is the longest down cycle that there's ever been. And it's due to lack of competition. There's just there's nothing out there. Unfortunately, now it's very hard for an independent promotion to get the fans to give them a chance. Because most guys on the indie scene are not 280, 290 pounds are not jacked up and the fans look at indie guys as being amateurs or not being real and we have the same license that the WWE guys have, we have the same license that the TNA guys have it's just we don't have millions and millions of dollars backing us. HCW Championship Wrestling presents the International Heavyweight Championship. Saturday, April 25th in Williamsburg, Kentucky. Zodiac versus J.R. Rock. With no time limit and no disqualification. Also featuring one night King of Kentucky Tournament. Don't miss the excitement at HCW Championship Wrestling this Saturday night at 8 p.m. at the National Guard Armory in Williamsburg. All seats eight dollars. Kids five and under one dollar. Yeah, if you if your dream is to go national and, and be competition, then yeah, it takes a lot of money to keep a, a company running even on the indie level it, it takes a tremendous amount of money 
to keep a company running. The hardest part, the hardest thing that I've found in trying to book shows and stuff, uh, it, it goes back to Vince McMahon and the WWE again. Uh, sponsors, the, the school groups, uh, police departments, fire departments, they see this stuff that's went on over the years, uh, half-naked women, the swearing, the, the vulgar gestures. They see that on Monday night. They equate that with all wrestling companies. And it is next to impossible to book a school now. Most of the time, you're relegated to National Guard armories, buildings that you have to outright rent to go in because the schools won't touch it. When, you have, when you're in these small communities, and the jobs are disappearing, it, it's really bad for business. He's talked to me about that several times, and I told him, I was like, if you don't think you can do it, all you can do is close the doors. You can go until you can't go anymore. The way I look at it, and I think a lot of the guys that are in the business right now, I love the wrestling business, I always have, and I, I believe and figure that everybody else should love it too. But, that, that's not always realistic. in the business? Maybe one. Maybe one more year at best. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's pretty a laundry list of things that are wrong. Uh, five bone spurs in the neck, two bum knees, uh, two bum ankles. Uh, left ankle that was broken twice, uh, separated shoulder, broken ribs, uh, and after 15 years, it definitely starts catching up. I look back on my career, uh, I don't have anything that, I wouldn't change a whole lot about it. I can look back on it and say, did I get to meet all my goals? No. But did I meet a lot of them? Absolutely. Did I surpass a few things that I thought I'd accomplish? Absolutely. Uh, the first time that I got uh, ranked in the Pro Wrestling Illustrated Top 500, uh, I never dreamed in a million years that that would happen. The first couple of times that my picture was printed in a magazine. That was something I dreamed about since I was a little kid. Fifteen interesting years. I'll say that. Uh, some good, some bad. Always interesting. 